Uh, we are all familiar with the uh, kind of writer who dispenses sentences such as, we needed to think outside the box in our search for the holy grail, but found that it was neither a magic bullet nor a slam dunk. So we rolled with the punches and let the chips fall where they may while seeing the glass is half full. It's a no-brainer. Now, the problem in, uh, with writing in cliches is that it either forces the reader to kind of shut down her visual brain and just process the words as blah, 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 blah. Or if she actually does think through the prose to the underlying image, she'll inevitably be upended by the inevitable uh, mixed metaphors. Uh, here's another sentence from a letter of recommendation I received. Jeff is a renaissance man drilling down to the core issues and pushing the envelope. <laughs> it's not clear how you can do all of those at the same time. Or this is from an article in the New York Times. Uh, no one has yet invented a condom that will knock people's socks off. <laughs> and if you uh, write this way, you will be eligible for membership in awful, that is, Americans who figuratively use literally. <laughs> and I'm told there's a British chapter. Now, it is perfectly acceptable to say she literally blushed. It's much more problematic to say, she literally exploded. <laughs> and it's very, very bad to say she literally emasculated him. A young man interviewed by a journalist explained that uh, he is a uh, digital and social media strategist. I deliver programs, products, and strategies to our corporate clients across the spectrum of communications functions. And when the journalist confessed that he had no idea what that meant and asked him what he really did, he finally broke down and he said, I teach big companies how to use Facebook. <laughs> Product engineers, uh, portable generators and combustion heaters used to carry uh, a warning more or less like uh, this. Mild exposure to CO can result in accumulated damage over time. Extreme exposure to CO may rapidly be fatal without producing significant warning symptoms. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, and as a result, several hundred Americans every year uh, turned their houses into gas chambers and asphyxiated themselves and their families by running uh, heaters and generators indoors. <clears throat> Until they replaced the warning with this one, using a generator indoors can kill you in minutes. <laughs> So, classic prose can literally be a matter of life and death. Yes, literally. <laughs> Obeying bogus rules can literally lead to a crisis in governance. Literally. In 2009, uh, Chief Justice John Roberts, who was a uh, famous grammatical stickler, was charged with administering the oath of office to uh, Barack Obama. And the wording of the oath of office, as stipulated in the US Constitution, is, uh, would be, I, Barack Obama, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. But Chief Justice Roberts um, spotted a split verb uh, in that uh, oath. And so he had Obama say, I, Barack Obama, do solemnly swear that I will execute the office of President to the United States faithfully, which not only is not a stylistic improvement, but it called the legitimacy of the transition of power into question, and so they had to repeat the oath of office in a <laughs> private ceremony in the White House later that afternoon.